The much-anticipated presidential debate is over, and here are my takeaways. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is uh, Mark Harrington, and you can go to markharrington.org to find out more about our podcast. You can follow me on social media. And if you do listen to us on our all the popular podcasting platforms, please share our program. And if you find merit in it, please leave a five-star review. Well, today, like a lot of Americans right now, we're kind of looking back at last night's presidential debate. And I wanted to take some time today to do that. I told my interns and staff leading up to this that it was going to be epic. And it was. The build up to this presidential debate was probably more than what we've ever seen, I think, since we've had these televised debates. And the only reason I felt it was going to be that big, and most people did, is because Donald Trump has been, you know, the, the Justice Department has uh, brought indictments against him. He's now a convicted felon. And then you have the issue of uh, the the age issue on uh, Joe Biden's side. So it was epic. In fact, uh, in, I think it was in 1960 when the first presidential debate happened, and that was uh, John F. Kennedy against Richard Nixon. And they attribute Nixon's loss to that debate because they said Nixon looked like he hadn't shaved. Think about that. Uh, televised presidential debates do matter. They haven't recently, but this one certainly did. Uh, Joe Biden rolled the dice by doing this in June. He thought that might help him because he felt maybe he needed to kickstart his campaign because he was losing in the battle go- uh, battleground states. Uh, that did not help him in the end. Uh, the rules were set by Biden. That is no audience. And also the mics would be shut off after they got their couple minutes to to uh, to talk. Uh, actually, these these rules did not help Biden last night. Trump was disciplined. He stayed within the rules. Uh, he was civil for the most part. Uh, and I think it actually helped him. Uh, Joe Biden had a week to prepare. I don't think it would have mattered if he had a month or a year to prepare. Uh, his cognitive decline is Palpable. Everybody who watched, I think, if, if, unless they're just not even paying attention, now knows that his cognitive con- decline is for real. And I, I can't imagine anyone thinking that this man is up to the job for the next four years. Uh, I think that a lot of uh, media ran cover for him up until now, hoping that he might be able to pull something off last night. Well, uh, it, it's it's too late. It's too late. So listen, I just want to play one clip, and this was the one that'll go down in history that uh, that torpedoed Joe Biden's uh, reelection campaign. So go ahead and play this clip. What I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires really? in America. And what's happening? <laughs> They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2 percent in taxes. If they just paid 24 percent. 25%, either one of those numbers. They've raised $500 million, billion dollars, I should say, uh, in a 10 year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, no. dealing with. Everything we have to do with, uh, oh. look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. No. Oh, man, I tell you, that is it. It was over right there. That debate ended, that ended it right there for Joe Biden. Uh, not just in this debate, but I think his, his campaign's over. Uh, It's just obvious, unfortunately, the decline, uh, this man's cognitive decline. Uh, He he should have uh, told the American people he wasn't running for reelection after the 2022 campaign uh, when they took the, uh, you know, when when Republicans did not take both houses. He should have just said, hey, I'm, I'm going to step aside and allow for a new generation of Democrats 
to take over the reins. And he didn't. And now we're here. I think that uh, before I didn't think Joe Biden would step aside. I thought that he would run through November. I think I've changed my mind. Like a lot of Americans today believe that this man needs to step aside. Uh, The question is, who's going to replace him if they do? I think Kamala Harris is going to be the first choice because she is a sitting vice president. She is a woman. She would be the first woman president. And she is African-American. Now, is she capable? Is she? No. Her polling numbers are worse than Joe Biden's. But I think that uh, I I don't know how they get around the fact that they're not going to let the second in charge uh, in the White House take the position. Gavin Newsom would be my second choice. Gretchen Whitmer Whitmer has been floated as a a possibility. I think we're going to find out in a couple of weeks. Obviously, it's going to have have to happen before the Democrat National Convention, which is in August. So there's a lot to follow here. Uh, After last night, it's definitely Trump's uh, campaign to lose. Uh, Before, I thought it was a toss up. I don't think it is now. I think he's he shoot. He will end up being the clear front front runner. So. You can get this kind of analysis all day long. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. It's self-evident that Joe Biden is not capable of running uh, uh, the country uh, in in a second term. And I think it's time that the Democrats are likely going to replace him. But I don't want to talk about that today. What I want to do mostly is talk about the issue of abortion, which is front and center this year. In fact, one of the top issues when Americans are asked, obviously, the Democrats think it's a winning issue. It's the only issue that I'm aware of that Joe Biden pulls better than Donald Trump. And so they're, they made an issue. It was uh, brought up at, at the debate last night, and both candidates were asked questions about it. So let's go ahead and play this clip. It's a little bit long, but I'm going to go through it each time. I'm going to stop along the way and make some comments. So go ahead and play this clip. It's absolutely criminal. Thank you, President Trump. Dana? This is the first presidential election since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This morning, the court ruled on yet another abortion case, temporarily allowing emergency abortions to continue in Idaho, despite that state's restrictive ban. Former President Trump, you take credit for the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, which returned the issue of abortion to the states. Correct. However... Mm -hmm. The federal government still plays a role in whether or not women have access to abortion pills. They're used in about two thirds of all abortions. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court. Stop there. Really good question, I have to say. Uh, And and CNN, to be honest, was a winner last night. If there are winners and losers, Donald Trump was a winner. CNN was a winner, believe it or not. They stayed to the format. They asked good questions. They didn't interrupt like the last time with Chris Wallace in the first presidential election of 2020. I was shocked. Uh, They gained a lot of cred last night, probably saved the network. All right, go ahead. First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill. Wrong. Stop. That is not correct. I I don't know who's briefing Donald Trump, but. He's wrong on that. The Supreme Court did not approve the abortion pill. The abortion pill was approved, if I recall, back in 2000, long ago. Uh, So it's been legal for 24 years, at least. The Supreme Court ruled last week uh, on an abortion pill case, and they basically said that the the people bringing the case, which was a bunch of pro-life doctors, do not have standing. To, to uh, So it, it was not a ruling on the abortion pill. So Donald Trump is wrong on that. Go ahead. And I agree with their decision to have done that. And I will not block it. And well, will stop there. He can't block it anyway. The president of the United States can't block rulings from the Supreme Court. So it's, it's amazing how much they they either don't understand what's going on or, or I just don't get it. They're not getting briefed properly. But he knows that. He knows it. a Supreme Court ruling he can't touch. He can't block it. The only thing he can do is through the U.S. Congress or as an executive order. Neither one of those are going to trump, uh, like the pun, trump a Supreme Court uh, ruling. Go ahead. And if you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex but not really complex, 51 years ago, 
You had Roe v. Wade, and everybody wanted to get it back to the states, everybody, without exception. Democrats, you- Stop there. I mean, this is one of those Trumpisms, right? Everybody, we're the greatest. Uh, this is the greatest economy. He just, he basically exaggerates on everything. That's just how he is. But it's not true that everybody wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. Uh, there were some liberal scholars who did. Uh, obviously, almost every conservative scholar or constitutionalist think it's, thinks it should have been reversed, but not everybody. Go ahead. Liberals, conservatives, everybody wanted it back, religious leaders. Everybody. And what I did is I put three great Supreme Court justices on the court, and they happened to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade and moving true. it back to the states. This is something that everybody wanted. Now, 10 years Not ago true, or so, they started talking about the Trump and how many of this and getting into other things. But every legal scholar throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it brought back to the states. I did that. Now the state. Stop here. At- Just real quick. The split screen. Look, look at Biden. It's unbelievable. He looks like he doesn't even know where he is. And that happened all night long. Uh, that split screen did not help Joe Biden. Go ahead. Continue on. How the states are working it out. If you look at Ohio, it was a decision that was it was a, an end result that was a little bit more liberal than you would have thought. Uh, Kansas, I would say the same thing. Uh, Texas is different. Florida is different. But they're all making their own mm. decisions right now. And right now, the states control it. That's the vote of the people. Like Ronald Reagan. Stop, believe- stop there. Now, he's right that it is given back to the states and it is the vote of the people that will decide. That's what we're seeing in the last two years. State constitutional amendments were zero for seven on the pro-life side. You're seeing legislatures in red states restrict or ban abortion altogether. You're seeing legislatures in blue states expanded up to the very moment of birth. Uh, And then you have the constitutional amendments. This is true. This is what's going on. But the idea that we're going to leave this to the people to decide, uh, it's not a a, a final conclusion to all this. Uh, We don't make murder up to the people to decide. And the right to life is a fundamental right. It's enshrined in our Declaration of Independence, and it's foundational for all other rights. It's not up to a vote, friends. And when the Supreme Court reversed or overturned Roe, they gave it back to the states. They should have gone farther and uh, recognized that that word person in the 14th Amendment protected the unborn. And that should have done it for all 50 states. But they didn't go that far. Of course, uh, uh, you know, Clarence Thomas felt that they should. But Donald Trump is just he's he's speaking. He's saying the, the facts, the matter that is that it is up to the people to decide. But the problem with all of this is that that's not where this has to end. And and Joe Biden later on makes that point quite well. Go ahead and continue on. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions. I am a person that believes. And frankly, Mm-mm. I think it's important to believe in the exceptions. Some people, you have to follow Mm-mm. your heart. Some people don't believe in that. But I believe Stop. in the here's the Here's the thing. Uh, we'll get to this. But Ronald Reagan did sign a law that allowed... Abortion was illegal in California. I think it was 1967. He did sign a bill that expanded abortion to allow for rape and incest and life of the mother exceptions. Later on, and not much later on, he regretted it. And he came out and said he regrets doing that because that opened the door to legal abortion and to the idea that this went up to the U.S. Supreme Court. So Ronald Reagan did sign a law, a bill that did expand abortion in California to include rape and excess, uh, exceptions in the life of the mother. But that doesn't mean that he believed in it. In fact, he retracted his views of that not long after. Uh, the idea that rape and incest exceptions should be acceptable as a pro-life candidate is something that none of us in this side of the, the ledger, that is the anti-abortion side, agrees with. We disagree with uh, Donald Trump on this. Uh, a lot of pro-life uh, politicians and, and those running for for office do not hold to rape and incest exceptions. Some do, but you know I'm not going to go into why they're wrong. 
Uh, I think we all should understand that because no child is an exception. And it doesn't matter how they were conceived, either through love or through an act of violence. It doesn't change the humanity of the unborn. But Donald T Trump is taking the rape and incest position because he feels like it's a pragmatic one and he wants to win elections. And he has basically made that estimation politically. Go ahead and continue on. I believe in that, but I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. Follow your heart, but... You have to follow, follow your heart. heart. Stop there. Follow your heart. I don't want people to follow their heart. On issues like this, fundamentally, abortion is murder. It's the taking of a human life, innocent human life. Don't follow your heart on that. Uh-uh. It should be against the law, should be outlawed in all 50 states. How we get there? Well, that's the process we're in right now. Go ahead. And because that has to do with other things, you got to get elected. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life. This is where he gets good, by the way. He, gets, he turns the corner and, and aims his rhetorical guns at the Democrats. Go ahead. Take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby mm -hmm. aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. What happened is we brought it back to the states and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great Well, thing. that's not true. They're not coming together. Uh, we have the divided states of America on abortion. We got... Uh, abortion free states and we have abortion havens. We've got probably 12 constitutional amendments on the ballot in November. Who knows how they're going to shake out? We are ending. We are entering into a period of time where we have a divided nation like we did on slavery, where we had free states and slave states. That's where we're going to end up here before long. Go ahead and continue on. That's not unity. That's not coming together, by the way. Go ahead and continue. It's been a terrible thing what you've done. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Roe when it was decided, supported Roe. And that was that's this idea that they were all against it is just ridiculous. And this is the guy who says the state should be able to have it. We're in a state where in six weeks, you don't even know whether you're pregnant or not, but you cannot see a doctor have your, and have him decide on what your circumstances are, whether you need help. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states. That needs to Stop there. Good point. I mean, you got to hand it to Joe Biden here. He's exposing the the error in the idea that we want to give it to the states to decide this. We wouldn't do it with civil rights. We shouldn't do it with abortion. So actually, this is one of his strongest points of the entire night. Go ahead. Different rule. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered and went to the funeral. And the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in, there. they talk about that. But here's the deal. What? There's a lot of young women who are being raped by their, by their in-laws, by their, by, by their spouses, brothers and sisters. By, oh, it's, just, it's, it's just ridiculous. And they can do nothing about it. And they try to arrest them when they cross state lines. Thank you. Stop there. Hold on. Well, I don't get it because Donald Trump just said he's for the exceptions. Why is Joe Biden bringing them up? Most of these laws have those exceptions in them. Uh, go ahead and continue on. There have been many young women murdered by the same people he allows to come across our border. We have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. Consider the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. And he opened it up, and these killers are coming into our country. Now he's talking about and They are raping and killing women, and it's a terrible thing. As far as the abortion is concerned, it is now back with the states. The states are voting. Uh, in many cases, the, it's a, frankly a very liberal decision. In many cases, it's the opposite. But they're voting, and it's bringing it back to the vote of the people, which is what everybody wanted, including the founders, if they knew about this issue, which, frankly, Stop. they didn't. That's hilarious. I mean, the founders, if they knew about this issue, how would he know? <laughs> it's just kind of these. This is typical Trump speak. Go ahead. But they would have been, everybody wanted brought back. Ronald Reagan everybody. wanted it brought back. He wasn't able to get it. Everybody wanted it brought back. And many presidents had tried to get it back. I was the one to do it. And again, this gives it the vote of the people. And that's where they wanted it. Every legal scholar wanted it that way. 
Staying on the topic of abortion, President Biden, seven states, I'll let you do that. Uh, this is the same topic. Seven states have no legal restrictions on how far into a pregnancy a woman can obtain an abortion. Do you support any legal limits on how late a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy? I support it. Go ahead and stop here. By the way, another good question by CNN. Asking Joe Biden if he has any limits on abortion because the Democrats don't. Uh, They've been clear about that. But go ahead and play this clip. Able to terminate a pregnancy. I support Roe v. Wade, which had three trimesters. First time is between the woman and the doctor. Second time is between the doctor and an extreme situation. The third time is between the doctor, I mean, between the, the woman and the state. The idea Stop. that the politics. You know, this is just mind boggling that neither one of these candidates really understand the issue. I wonder if they understand any of the issues, to be honest with you very much. But and we can't. How can we not do better than these two? <laughs> you know, uh, that's beside the point. The fact is that. Joe Biden's wrong on this. Roe v. Wade created the three trimesters, first, second, and third. Roe, I'm I'm sorry, Roe allowed for abortion in the first trimester unrestricted. Doe v. Bolton allowed for abortion in the second and third for health reasons, and those can include, those reasons include emotional, familial, physical, psychological, and that's where, you know, state it, the courts interpreted it sometimes to, to basically make it legal up to birth. Uh, and in, in, in Doe v. Bolton, the states were given some leeway when it came to protecting what they call potential life. So Joe Biden's completely wrong on jo- Roe v. Wade and the trimesters and all that. And uh, but go ahead and continue on. Idea that the politicians they, they, that the founders wanted the politicians to be the ones making decisions about women's health is ridiculous. That's the last. No politician should be making that decision. A doctor should be making those decisions. That's how it should be run. Mm. That's what you're going to do. And if I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. Okay, stop there. Now, restoring Roe v. Wade, that's not what they're doing. In fact, they want to expand it, right? The Women's Health Protection Act, so called, that's been introduced in Congress expands abortion beyond what Roe allowed for. There's no limitations on it. So he's not restoring Roe v. Wade. He's trying to expand it. Go ahead and continue on. That means he can take the life of the baby in the ninth month and even after birth, because some states, Democrat run, take it after birth. Again, the governor, former governor of Virginia, put the baby down. He's caught on tape. I mean, so he's he's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Nobody wants that to happen, Democrat or Republican. Nobody wants it to happen. Stop there. Now, he is channeling back to, to uh, what is it, 2016 in that epic debate with Hillary Clinton when he basically said late term abortion, ripping the baby out of the womb in the ninth month. Uh, that was a mic drop moment in 2016. So he's using some of that same language this time around, which was a very effective in 2016. It's very effective right now. Uh, and he's turned the corner here and he's uh, aiming at the Democrats as being the extremists, which they are on abortion. It's not the pro-lifers. It's the the uh, the Democrats, the, the pro-abortion people who are the extremists. They do want to expand abortion. They don't want limitations and they want you to pay for it with your tax dollars. So Donald Trump, this is a, a big win in, in the debate right here turning the corner and painting them out to be Democrats, to be the extremists. Go ahead and continue on. That is simply not true. That Roe v. Wade does not provide for that. That's not the circumstance. Only a woman's life is in danger. She's going to die. That's the only circumstance in which that can happen. But we are not not true. Roe v. Wade did not do that. Like I said, it allowed for abortion in the third and second trimester in the Doe v. Wade, actually Doe v. Bolton, uh, for health reasons. Go ahead and continue. Period. Period, period. Under Roe v. Wade, you have late-term abortion. You can do whatever you want, depending on the state. You can do whatever you want. We don't think that's a good thing. We think it's a radical thing. We think the Democrats are the radicals, not the Republicans. It is true that late-term abortion is legal up to birth. That doesn't mean a lot of them happen that late. But in New Mexico, California, New York, Illinois, there there are no limits on abortion. And that happened under Roe v. Wade. And it's happening now. Go ahead. 
Supreme Court. He takes credit for taking it away. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? In fact, if the if the MAGA Republicans he gets elected and the MAGA Republicans control the Congress and they pass a universal ban on abortion, period, across the board at six weeks or seven or eight or ten weeks, something very very conservative. Is he going to sign that bill? I'll veto it. He'll sign it. Thank you. All right, we can stop there. Uh, I think, again, uh, Joe Biden was strong there at the end asking what Donald Trump would do on a federal ban on abortion. And Donald Trump has basically avoided that question altogether. I don't think he should. Uh, He's just saying it should be a state's issue and basically says he's not going to do anything as president. Uh, Obviously, I disagree with that. I think there's a federal role and always has been and should be. President of the United States can do a lot. He can use the executive branch to rein in uh, abortion. He can uh, help pass legislation in the U.S. Congress. He can, you know, appoint, nominate Supreme Court justices that would uphold Dobbs. So there's a lot he can do. Eventually, we've got to get to the federal government. And I think either there's going to be a constitutional amendment establishing or reaffirming the rights of personhood for the unborn in the 14th Amendment, or the Supreme Court's going to see that and affirm that. So that's eventually where we need to end up. But that was last night's debate on abortion. Uh, I do want to switch gears real quick here and just show you another clip that uh, uh, in which Donald Trump was addressing evangelicals. I believe it was, I'm not sure it was in Atlanta. Oh, it was in Washington, sorry. Uh, and this was the Faith and Freedom Conference. Uh, this is Ralph Reed's group, I believe. This was last week. And if you wonder whether Joe Biden and Donald Trump are different on abortion, because a lot of people say, oh, there's not a lot of difference between them. Uh, you know, there is. <laughs> Just watch what happened there. I think you can tell that Donald Trump is going to be better on abortion than Joe Biden. I don't think there's any question in our minds. Are we happy with Donald Trump's position on abortion? No, not necessarily. Rape and incest exceptions? No. No. That he says it's only a state's issue. I'm not satisfied with that, but it's far better than Joe Biden. And so we've it's a binary choice pretty much this time around. So we have to make our decisions based on that. One of the things we've I've wondered is this whole weaponization of the justice system against the Biden regime's political enemies. And we have seen recently, and I've reported on it here on the program, where my friends, some of my fellow activists, in the pro-life movement, have been imprisoned and right now sit in jail in prison because of their peaceful pro-life activities at abortion centers in the violation of so-called the the, uh, Freedom of Access Clinic entrances law. Uh, Donald Trump has never come out and said he would pardon them, but this is as close as it gets. And I think this is another thing that we ought to look at in evaluating whether we're going to vote for Donald Trump or whether we really see a distinction between him and Joe Biden on abortion. The fact that he even brings this up now, of course, it's two evangelicals, so it is a friendly crowd and he is serving them some red meat, if you will. But the idea that he is going to review these cases is a good thing because the Justice Department is being used against pro-life activists, peaceful pro-life activists and others who are against the regime. And if Joe Biden gets back in, it's open season on pro-lifers, including created equal other groups like that, possibly. Uh, so go ahead and play this clip. I think it's a uh, another important statement by Donald Trump in the pro-life, uh, in his pro-life position. Go ahead and play this clip. By contrast, Joe Biden is weaponizing the Justice Department to viciously persecute pro-life activists and Americans of faith. Just last month, the Biden DOJ got Paula Harlow, a 75-year-old woman in poor health, sentenced to two years in prison for singing outside of a club. She was singing. (laughs) Well, she was sitting and trespassing. She was singing beautifully outside (laughs) of a clinic. And fearing she would die in prison, her husband pleaded with the judge for mercy and even asked to be thrown in prison with his wife. And the judge responded by mocking their religion. He was mocking their religion. I wonder who that judge is. Paul is one of many peaceful pro-lifers who Joe Biden has rounded up, sometimes with SWAT teams sure. and thrown them in jail. Many people are in jail over this. This is just crazy. Mm-hmm. We're going to get that taken care of immediately, first day. Immediately. 
You know, that's a strong commitment. Sounds like he's going to pardon them. But let's call these brave Americans what they really are. It's persecuted Christians. That's what they are. They're persecuted. It's true. Political prisoners. No doubt about it. So, again, here, another reason why I think as Christians and pro-lifers, we got to vote for Donald Trump. Not a big fan overall, the guy, you know, but, hey, he's he's who we have. He's the one that's going to uh, have the most likelihood of winning the White House, and therefore he can do some things as president that slow down this march over the cliff in our country and when it comes to abortion. Now, the alternative is Joe Biden or maybe someone else. And I submit to you, I think it's Kamala Harris, as bad as she is in front of the camera and she babbles and all that and her popularity is in the tank. She is a sitting vice president. She's female and African-American. And I expect that they are likely going to turn to her now. I could be wrong, but if they do, we need to know her position also. And so if you would, Mr. Producer, cue up this clip. This is Kamala Harris speaking on abortion uh, and asked on MSNBC. Go ahead and play this clip. And had Lynn miscarried, if that if she had needed care for that today, depending on where you live, you may not get it. It's been two years now since Roe was overturned. Um, and now we're dealing with the raw reality of that, which is women bleeding out in lots. Stop. Women are not bleeding out. If they were, that would be front page. It would be national news on all the cable news channels. It's just not happening. What a lie. Go ahead. Yeah, on bathroom floors. Um, yeah, they might be doing that because they're taking the abortion pill. What your Go thoughts ahead. were when Roe was overturned and now what we do with the cases before us, like Idaho, if if the Supreme Court goes with the state. Which, by the way, stop. This was this was uh, taped before the Supreme Court ruled on the Idaho case. And again, the Idaho case, Supreme Court just punted it back to Idaho. They didn't even rule on it. So it's all fear mongering. Go ahead. Are women going to be able to get abortion care in ERs in Idaho? Listen, first, are there going to be any other options? Currently, yes. The answer is yes. Currently, yes, because the Supreme Court did refuse to rule on the merits of that case. Go ahead and continue. Highest court in our land just took a fundamental right that had been recognized from the people of America, from the women of America, to make decisions about their own body. Stop. It was never recognized from the people of America. Nobody voted on it. Nine unelected judges established the right to abortion of the Constitution. It doesn't exist. The words aren't there. Uh, They made it up. Go ahead. The notion of it all, that in this year of our Lord, 2024, the highest court in the United States of America... (laughs) would take such a fundamental freedom from its people. And understanding that this is not just a matter that is for debate and discussion and intellectual conversation. The real harm that has occurred every day in America since that case was decided and these laws are being passed, to your point, we know the stories about women seeking care because they're going through a miscarriage and being turned away by an emergency room because the physicians there are true. afraid they're going to be put in jail in a state like Texas. They provide miscarriage is protected all across a healthcare the country. provider doing their job. And I don't think that the, I think that when you look at this issue, most people agree you don't have to abandon your faith. You have to ban in your faith or do you- No, stop here. No, you you, can, you don't have to abandon your faith, per se, but you do abandon God. Scripture is clear. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not shed innocent blood. We establish that the unborn are human. Abortion is murder. It takes the life of an innocent human being. And if you are pro-abortion, you are abandoning God, the God of the scriptures. Now, you might have some made-up faith uh, that— that isn't Christian, or maybe it's some other religion or what, and you don't have to abandon it in that case, but you are abandoning the God of the scriptures. Go ahead. To agree, the government should not be telling women what to do with their bodies. If they choose to Stop. You know, this is the old tired out rhetoric of the pro-choice people that government's trying to 
restrict women's reproductive health care and their rights to their own bodies. We know that the unborn is a separate body residing and growing inside the mother's womb and deserves protection. It's not her body. It's not a part of her body. It's a separate body. This is a lie that they've been telling for 50 years. I think people understand what's going on, but yet they continue using it. Go ahead. Consult with their priest, their pastor, their rabbi, their imam. Priest, imam. But not the government telling women what to do. <laughs> it's just crazy. You know, the government tells people what to do in all kinds of situations. That's what law is. And law restricts people's freedom in some way or the other. Uh, that's what it does. That's what it's intended to do. It's a restrainer against wrongdoing. So the idea that uh, we can't have laws that protect people from killing one another, again, would, would not pass the smell test if it weren't for this issue to which we dehumanize, they do, de dehumanize the unborn so that they are a non-person and therefore they can be killed. So the reason I bring up Kamala Harris is because I think she may well be uh, turned to to be the nominee of the Democrat Party now after what happened in the debate, uh, presidential debate with uh, Donald Trump. Uh, we have one last clip, and uh, this is from the same interview on MSNBC. Uh, and, and she, uh, the moderator here, or the, uh, the host, turns to this uh, abortion activist, Hadley Duvall. And uh, so go ahead and play this clip. Uh, this is nauseating as well, but go ahead. So much. You know, if you have a, a woman in your life that means something to you, her life is at stake. It does not matter. Stop. How is her life at stake? I, I, I don't see women dying. The sky's not falling. Rows overturn and women are not dying. Have you noticed? If you want an abortion, you can get one in the United States. You can cross the border. You can order the abortion pill by mail. The Supreme Court allowed the FDA rules to stay in a place. Uh, this is all just a bunch of pack of lies. Continue on. She is 12, 9, 34. Nine you know, it really does not matter. If there is a woman who is in that reproductive age, then, you know, her life is at stake. Really? Election. And it does not matter if. It didn't if sound like Donald Trump's taking away women's lives. When he said, we're going to leave it up to the to people to decide and vote on these in the states. That didn't sound like it to me, but go ahead. The Democrat in your life, you know, it's get off your high horse because women, we don't get to choose, you know, a whole lot. And you have really to choose who you can vote what for. don't you get to choose? Uh, this is just beyond belief. Uh, you have the vote. To, you have the right to vote. Uh, women are uh, holding all kinds of uh high places and in, 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 in government and in business all across America. So uh, maybe there's still work to be done there, but there's been huge advances in legitimate women's rights. Go ahead. And there is a lot of things that need to be worked on. And, you know, we can't get it all done, but at the very least we could get out of women's business when it involves their health care. And I've always said, you know, I'm I'm pro minding your own business. Live your religion. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you mind your own business and not have a position on abortion then? Why don't you not tell others what they should do and how they should vote if you want to mind your own business? You know, they want it both ways. They have a double double standard. That's how it works, right? Also, she keeps saying women. Uh what is a woman? In today's culture, and these the the left, politically speaking, don't they can't even define a woman, uh, you know. So I don't know. It, it, this is the type of rhetoric that somehow passes for uh, a, a good argument, unfortunately, with certain portions of the American public. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring these things up. I think that Joe Biden is on the way out. I think Kamala Harris might be taking. The nomination come August because of Joe Biden's performance last night. I could be wrong. Maybe they'll stick with him. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how the polling is in the coming days as results of this uh, this presidential debate and whether it has anything, any bearing on that. But uh, anyway, th I think it's clear as to who's more pro-life than the other. I think that's important. 
And we need to consider that as we're going to the polls here in November. Well, anyway, I just wanted to give you my take on the presidential debate. Uh, and hopefully this is helpful in trying to discern and navigate the candidate's positions on a key issue. And I think one of the most fundamental issues that we face as Americans, and that is the right to life. Are we going to protect the most innocent among us or not? A nation that does not do that does not have a future. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to make a difference for the cause of life, liberty, and justice, go to createdequal.org. To follow Mark, go to markharringtonshow.com. Be sure to tune in next time for your marching orders in the culture war.